We now turn to the last case on this morning's docket. It's case number 121064 in the matter of Joan Hawkins. Council, before you begin, uh, at the nine o'clock reading of the docket by Mr. Shima, the clerk of the Supreme Court, uh, Joan Hawkins did not respond or nobody responded on her behalf. So let me ask again, uh, since no one is coming forward to join you at the table, uh, is Joan Hawkins in the courtroom? I see no response of any sort, so please proceed. Sure. May I please the court, Stan Hazel, appearing for the Disciplinary Administrator's Office. Uh, this is an original proceeding in disci attorney discipline. Um, there was a panel hearing last October uh, in 2018, the respondent was not present at that hearing. The panel did find um, in its final hearing report that adequate notice was given to the respondent pursuant to Supreme Court Rule 215. Uh, she's not present here today, obviously, and so I want to—I kind of want to go through real quickly the attempts that were made to give her notice of this hearing. Uh, the clerk's office, pursuant to Supreme Court Rule 212C, uh, sent out a copy of the final hearing report and. Um, the table of contents to the respondent's residence and to her last registered address, office address, by certified mail. Um, numerous attempts were um, made to serve her at her office and at her house, and they were never claimed. And so those came back to the clerk's office in April of 2019. Um, then by certified mail in June of 2019, I'm sorry, uh, the clerk sent a certificate advising the respondent that this case was going to proceed, but no exceptions have been taken to the final hearing report. Um, that again was sent certified mail to the office, the respondent's office, and to her, to her residence. Uh, it came back unclaimed. And then finally, in September of 2019, by certified mail, a copy of the Supreme Court docket was sent to her residence. It was apparent at that time uh, that she was no longer occupying her office. Uh, there were attempts to, uh, I mean, it was, it was not claimed. Uh, it was returned unclaimed to the clerk's office in um, October of 2019. And finally, um, my investigator, Bill Delaney, attempted to deliver a copy to the respondent's residence in Lawrence of this court's docket for this week on Tuesday evening. Um, nobody answered the door. Um, a copy of a letter from me and the Supreme Court docket were left in her mailbox, um, and we've had no response to that. Uh, there were three separate complaints that were heard by the panel last October. Um, first of all, you should, uh, I think you know, should understand that she's been suspended from the practice of law since April 15th of 2016 for 18 months. I mean, she was required by your, the opinion issued in April of 2015 to go through a reinstatement hearing. She's never applied for reinstatement, so she's really been suspended from the practice of law since that date, April 16th. Um, the misconduct found by the panel in this case occurred shortly before her suspension and somewhat after her suspension, and I'll explain that real quickly. Uh, the first case that she had, right before her suspension, she had agreed to represent an individual, uh, a criminal defendant, in his attempt to set aside pleas to two serious felonies. Uh, she actually appeared at a hearing and argued the, the withdrawal of the plea issue. Um, and then at the end of that day, she was directed, at the end of that hearing, she was directed to file um, a brief in the case. That brief was due prior to, just prior to her suspension, but it was never filed. She never withdrew from the case and she didn't comply with Supreme Court Rule 218, which tells you what you should do when, when you're actually suspended from practice of law. She also failed to cooperate in that investigation. In the second case, she represented the husband in a divorce case. The wife was ordered to pay her client $32,000. Um, the money was paid, but she continued to attempt to collect the money, including placing a lien on the wife's real estate, which impaired her ability to, to sell that property. Now, that just doesn't even make sense to me, but again, she didn't cooperate in the investigation, so we don't really know what her explanation was for that. Um, the third case that was heard by the panel involved the respondent's trust account. Um, we had received uh, a letter from the bank, from an official at the bank where the respondent's trust account was located, and her other accounts. There were garnishments that were being attempted on those accounts. 
uh, we subpoenaed the records. And what they showed was that at the date of her suspension, she had $37,000 in her trust account. What they also showed was that, that she deposited about $18,000 of her own money from her retirement account into her trust account after her suspension. And good for her lawyers because $17,000 of that went to her lawyers who represented her in the, in the first disciplinary case. Uh, she also wrote um, checks out of her trust account to a, a, for a couple of credit card debts. Um, that still left some money in the trust account, which we were able to figure out belonged to her clients from April when she was suspended in 2016 till September of 2016. And this is good news. Um, she actually reimbursed those clients, the unearned retainers. So we have had no indication that, that any client lost any money. Um, as far as the recommendation in this case, the hearing panel recommended disbarment. Ms. Knoll handled this case at the hearing panel level. She recommended a minimum of indefinite suspension. Uh, today, uh, my recommendation is disbarment. I, I think it's pretty obvious. Uh, you know, we have prior serious discipline and 18 month suspension, which involved dishonest conduct, fairness to opposing counsel. Uh, the misconduct in the present cases occurred at a time uh, when the respondent knew that, it, that your opin opinion in our first disciplinary, disciplinary case was imminent. I mean, all this stuff that went on was going on while she was involved in, in the disciplinary process in her first case. Um, obviously, the respondent's failure to appear here today, you've held this on numerous occasions, is, is an additional aggravating factor. And so the recommendation is, is our recommendation is disbarment. Um, I, I too want to say, Your Honor, Chief Justice, um, that I appreciate being able to appear in front of you all these years and so many times in so many cases. I understand that the, the most uplifting cases, I mean, should have been a case like the last case where there was a give and take that was going on instead of a sad case where a, a lawyer who went to, to law school for seven years just doesn't even appear here today. But your even handedness in the disciplinary cases, which are not so easy, has been great. It's been an honor to, to be the last case that, that, that you will hear, and thank you very much for your service. Thank you, Counsel, for your kind comments. Appreciate it. Do we have any questions? The court will take this matter under advisement. All right. Thank you. That concludes this week's docket. The court is now adjourned. All right.